everything you want me to be Why do these walls that hold me back Hold me back from you I'm trying so hard so I can be free So you and I can run This race you mark for me You were always faithful, you were always kind, even when the world turns its back, I know you're mine. You were always faithful, you were always there for me, when I need your love, your love carried me, more than a saint. Fall back from your grace Until I know That I see you face to face I Lay it at your feet again Because I know Your love for me will never change Great your mercy and how great your love is and how great your mercy and how great you love This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a great day to be in the house of God. It's a great day to be with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, just for our virtual people, just uh, be a reminder that uh, Deacon Joe will be meeting um, out in the front of church from 10 to 10.30 for drive through communion. Uh, we're still going to keep that going while the COVID thing is still doing its thing. Um, and as we have to do, some of you still feel more comfortable doing the virtual uh, church at this point. Um, also, uh, if you have any kind of prayer requests or prayer praise reports, please let the church know. Uh, you can email us at church at RedeemerStuart.com, or you can call the church office, or you can hand me a note, or if you come through drive through communion, you can give Deacon Joe that note. Uh, Pastor Stan is still going to be, um, he'll, you'll see him in the taping service that you're seeing now, uh, but he'll be one more time down in uh, West Palm helping out at Redeemer uh, Lutheran Church uh, as Pastor Dan's going through his cancer treatments. Um, also, a change of plans. The Live Nativity uh, planning group decided that it was more important for our community that we have some sort of Live Nativity. So they really brought it down uh, to just basically a Nativity scene and maybe a couple other things. Uh, maybe hand out a little baggies of cookies. It will be drive-through, uh, but please listen for that. We're going to need cookies for December uh, 12th and 13th, and if you could put those in little snacky bags or little lunchy bags or whatever, that'd be really helpful. Maybe two or three cookies per bag. Um, that would be helpful. Also, if you could donate Christmas lights. Doesn't matter what kind. Doesn't matter if they're used. Oh, just as long as they work. Um, and we're going to try to really light up the place here and just make it kind of special. 
Um, also, uh, November 29th, in between services, we're going to be doing the hanging of the greens, which is dec decorating the sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. So uh, please come if you desire, wear a mask, uh, that we do the ornaments and everything. It's fun for the family. And with everybody pitching in, we get done in about a half hour. Also, we'll be having a Thanksgiving Eve service at 7 o'clock on November 25th. Um, so we hope you'll take advantage of that. And one more thing, there is a virtual play being shown Wednesday, not Wednesday night, Monday night, this Monday night, in Albrecht Hall, which is the building behind the sanctuary. It's called The Great Divorce, and it starts at 6.30. You can check out the bulletin notes for more details or call mm. Jeff Banks, and he can fill you in. We also are blessed that... Uh, our sister Barb Salem has been very busy during this COVID time, and she's made, I have at least 25 prayer shawls here. She says she has another 10 under her bed, uh, so she's really been busy. So we want to dedicate these to the uh, mission of, of our Lord. Uh, we're so thankful, Heavenly Father, for the many gifts and talents you give your people and that they put them to use for your kingdom work. And just thank you for these shawls that are gonna to go to many kinds of people in, in all different kind of areas. Uh, maybe they're sick, or maybe they're in a nursing home, maybe they're at homebound, maybe, maybe they just need a special encouragement, whatever the case might be, Lord. We pray that they'd be used to your glory, that more and more people will be touched by the love of Jesus. And we dedicate them to your glory in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We also have periodically our, our principal of our school likes to give kind of an update as to what's going on in our ministry across the parking lot. So, uh, Mr. Murley, Tim Murley, please. Hello, friends of the Redeemer. I am Tim Murley and I serve as your school's principal. It's amazing to me to think that we are here in the middle of November and halfway through the second quarter. Being from Missouri, I wouldn't really be able to tell this from summer without a calendar. And the time change, of course. Oh, the, the shorter days. And, and of course, oh yeah, the election. Okay, I can still tell it's fall. And I'm looking forward to a little bit of that really great Florida weather that I keep hearing about. So just a few updates. Uh, on, the, on the COVID front, you know, that's changed many things for us. Redeemer families are doing a great job uh, to help with the health and safety of our families. Uh, no new cases have occurred at school, and we continue to serve seven students over four grades in our virtual platform. Uh, the fence, you've seen that is going up, and it appears to be working as planned. We are grateful for our installers who make it look really nice. Also, the planning ex the planning execution team at Redeemer for all their wisdom to make this happen. In our car line, we've made some adjustments and changes to help improve that whole process. We have a pick my kid application. We're glad to have that involved. Uh, kindergarten, fourth, fifth grade, just delivered a collection of canned goods to their, for, from their recent food drive. The items were collected for the House of Hope of Martin County. What a privilege to participate in service to those who are in need. Thank you for your donations and to the teachers for including your students. Preschool through eighth grade teachers been expressing their creative flair. First grade lived in a bat cave for a day. I was blown away by all the incredible stuff that students were learning and experiencing. Children's Museum brought their Dig It program to campus to provide a great enrichment experience to our fourth graders. So I got a question for you now. What do you give a sick lemon? Lemonade, of course. Question number two, why do seagulls fly over the sea? Well, because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay. Pretty bad. I get it. But the RAM reporters that we have are awesome. This is a collection of students who have dedicated time to create a weekly, weekly video called the RAM Report. The video includes the Friday announcements, is shared online with all the students at Redeemer, we also have robotics club, volleyball, cross country, just a few of the things starting up to get students involved outside of the classroom. More are scheduled to begin after the first of the year, so be looking for them. Preschool through eighth grade Advent services will be recorded soon as we look forward to preparing for the Advent season. This special experience is a fine example of how Redeemer students have unique opportunities 
to express their own unique gifts and talents and celebrate how each one contributes to the whole body. We enjoy special days like Crazy Sock Day, Pizza Day, every Friday is Redeemer Spirit Shirt Day. PTO also sponsors UFO Day. If you're wondering what that is, ask one of your Redeemer students. We've even held our very own election on November 3rd, and believe it or not, Duck Beat Farmer in two out of three classes. I know. We are currently working on budget so we can set tuition and fee rates for the 2021-22 school year uh, registration period that's coming up in just a few short weeks. So get the word out. Redeemer's a great school, does a great job of preparing students for future academic successes, but more than that, for leadership in the church and community, and most of all, prepares them for a relationship with Jesus. Thank you all for your help and continued support, bringing creativity, engagement, and quality learning together as a special experience for all. But to do it within the context of the gospel brings lessons that by the grace of God, and the working of the Holy Spirit can transform lives to His glory. Glory be to God for everyone He has brought together here at Redeemer. Thank you all for your time this morning. Thank you, Brother Tim. We stand to sing. You got it? Before I begin, I just want to announce um, a couple people have called me who are not here in church on Sunday and asked me what's going on. You've been praying for me for the last couple weeks, and I thank you for your prayer and your well wishes. For you people at home, I went through a catheterization a week and a half ago on my left and right side of my heart. I have a micro valve that's leaking. A week from Monday, I'll be going for... Um, 
CAT scans on my chest down through my groin. They're going to be checking out my veins to see if they're big enough for the equipment to go in. I have made that decision that I'm going to go forward and have this valve either fixed or replaced. I did that under guidance of my, my cardiologist and also my surgeon who felt I'm young, I am healthy, I don't have any problems. Better do it now than wait until something happens. So once again, you'll probably be praying for me for the next couple of weeks. Again, I thank you for the many prayers and the well wishes that you've given me. Makes me feel comfortable knowing that you're praying to the Lord and the Lord is gonna be with me and walk me through this whole situation. Let's remember our baptism. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, seek, speak, for your servants are listening. Teach us the wonders of your kingdom. We prepare ourselves to receive his gifts. Lord God, our sin puts up roadblocks to hearing, believing, and living the mysteries of the kingdom. Remove our sin for the sake of Jesus, crucified and risen. Fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we will receive the good news of the kingdom with joy. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. You are now ready to hear, believe, and live the good news of the kingdom in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. be with you and, and also with, with you. you let us pray together holy, holy spirit, spirit help us to use your, your gifts, gifts in faithful, faithful service, service and, and joy. joy in, in jesus, jesus name, name amen. amen you may be seated the old testament lesson comes from the book of proverbs reading in the 31st the writer praises a woman who uses the gifts she has been given I didn't pick this proverb. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant, She brings him her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for the household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands and she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with a lamp and does not go out at night. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine and 
fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, and when he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at, a time, at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is, her, is, is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done except, except, excellently, excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The New Testament reading comes to us from the book of 1 Corinthians, reading from the, first, the 12th chapter. Here the Apostle Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit gives us faith in Jesus and gifts to use for the Lord's service. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel is uh, from Matthew chapter 25, and this is another parable, the parable of the talents. Jesus speaks. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents. Uh, talents um, a talent was about 7,300 days wages. So if he gave five talents, just multiply that times five. And it depended if it was a silver talent or a gold talent. A gold talent could be as worth as much as 30 times more than a silver talent. So these are large sums of money that he gives them. It's not, he's not fiddling around, okay? To another, two, to another, one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went out at once and traded with them, and he made five more talents. So also he who had two talents made two more. And he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, 
You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I had not sown and gather where I scattered no seed? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has will be given, will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In a way, I don't really want to say this, but uh, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise <laughs> to you, you, O Christ. Christ. It's not <laughs> <laughs> the most fashionable way to end the gospel. And you may be seated. Uh, we invite the kids to come forward. I have something to share with them. And today, kids, I want to talk about a little bit about what Paul said in that reading. Where he talks about there's, there's, the, there's the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit gives out different gifts. And primarily, the first gift that he gives us is a gift of faith, because no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, I have, a, I have a match here. Now, please, no one's going to play with any matches here, okay? But I just want to do it for a sake of illustration, Okay. Now, I have a match. Now, what could I use this match for? Start a fire, light a candle. Light a candle, I can, um, I can put some paper under my charcoal in the grill, and I can light it up, right? And so I can have little barbecues, a little hamburger or steak or something like that. Um, I can maybe light a pilot light in, if you have a gas stove or a propane stove. You could... Um, Maybe you could uh, maybe uh, start your fireplace. If you have a fireplace, I imagine someday during this winter, Florida will get cold enough to do. I, I, Kevin and Becky can do that, right? They can do that already. Have you lit your fire yet? Have you done fire already? Yeah. I know some of you have fire pits out in the backyard, and when it gets cold enough, you're going to go out and you're going to light a fire. You're going to need a match to light that fire. So the match can be used for many different things, just like... We can be used for many different things, and it's the Holy Spirit, the fire of God. You know, Jesus once said, I'm going to come and I'm going to baptize you not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit. He's going to give us the power of God in order not only to have faith, but also to live out that faith in many and various ways. And St. Paul talked about some of those gifts of the Spirit. He talked about knowing, knowing things. He talked about being able to tell what's right and what's wrong. Uh, he talked about being servant. He talked about working miracles. There's a lot of different gifts of the Holy Spirit. Particularly, all of us have been given the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What a gift that God has given us, that he's given us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has gifted each one of us, not only with faith in Jesus and to confess Jesus, but also now to live for Jesus and use the gifts and talents he has given us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, Jesus thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For the gifts you have given to me. For the, the gifts, gifts you have given to me. Help me now use them. Help me now use them. To the Father's glory. To the Father's glory. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand to sing.
by faith and not by sight. By faith the prophet saw day when the long for Messiah would appear with the power to break the chains of sin and death and rise triumphant The church was called to go. In the power of the Spirit to the lost, to deliver captives and to preach good news in every corner of the earth. It was So thankful, Lord, you brought us to this time and place to remind us that we walk by faith and not by sight. And, and here we're going to be fed, fed with the bread of life, fed with the vitality of the Holy Spirit as we open up our hearts and our minds to hear your word. May it have an effect on our attitudes. May it have effect on the way we think. May it have effect on the way we speak and, and how we behave and what we do and what we don't do. We pray, Lord, uh, to gift us, gift us in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we've been doing throughout um, October and November, we've been talking some of the different parables of Jesus out of the Gospel of Matthew. So I'm going to begin with a story for you. In my confirmation class, I, I haven't done it every year. Um, I probably haven't done the last couple years, but I have this game I made up. I call it the investment game. And what happens is when the kids get into the room, you know, we had our opening prayer, or whatever, and then I would give them each an envelope randomly. I'd just give them an envelope. Inside that envelope was a slip of paper, and on that slip of paper was an amount of money. Some amounts were very low, some were kind of medium, some were really high. Didn't matter, just everybody got one. And then I'd tell them, what we're going to do is we're going to play the investment game. And I would give them a list of companies, and I said, you're going to invest in these companies if you so desire. You can do whatever you want. I don't care what you do, okay? So the kids would look at the different companies, and they'd be like, you know, crazy companies like Pete's Tacos, or I'd have one that Fish R Us lures, you know, stuff like that. I'd made up all these companies. And it was, there was probably about 25, 30 companies of all types and everyone had a different stock price you had to invest so much you know you know just like stock market works and I said at the end of the game we'll see how you did so the kids would go I'd be about we'd go about 10 minutes or whatever and they would figure it all everything out and, and at the end of the game I'd say okay how did you do so I would I would put the like the closing of the stock market I would put the new prices up what each stock made or lost well in my game all the stocks made money. So all you had to do was invest anything and you made something. Now, the kids didn't know that to begin with. They just you know, figured they were playing this game and everything else. Now, I always had, it, it always worked out because I was really hoping there would be a kid or two who would do nothing. 
And there was always a kid or two who would do nothing. They'd just kind of sit there and laugh and talk to their friends and go along their, their, their merry way and everything else. So at the end of the game, anybody that invested anything made something and they got a prize. Usually it was a piece of candy or something like that. But the kids that did absolutely nothing got absolutely nothing in return because they did nothing. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, the investment game sure sounds like the parable we just read. And you are right, the, the game was made up based on that parable. And so it's talking about Jesus who gifts his church, he gifts each one of us different things. Just kind of as he wills, he gives it out and in the text it says according to ability. And he, only, and he actually doesn't say anything about what to do with it, he just hands it out. Remember in the parable, the master just hands him his talents. He doesn't really say anything, but he goes away. Well, the implication is you should do something with it, right? You should invest it. And so that's what the parable is. You know, there's some. And like I said, I was always hoping there'd be some kids that wouldn't do anything because in the parable, you find the one guy who does absolutely nothing and he reaps his reward. So then you think, okay, well, what does this parable have to do with us? Because what does it mean? How does it apply to us? What are our takeaways? Well, I think what the description, what it's describing is what it means to be a faithful servant to God, okay, and to Jesus. And what do we do with the stuff that he gives us? So I came up with some different, different things, three things to be exact. How does a faithful servant understand this parable? The first thing, a faithful servant always knows the master owns everything. Just like when those kids came into my classroom, they were handed an envelope. They didn't earn it. They didn't do anything for it. They didn't even ask for it. They didn't even know what they were doing until I told them what they were doing. And I handed them the envelope. And that's the way a, a faithful servant understands in relationship to Jesus. Everything we have is a gift. We earn nothing. Everything was given to us by grace. Everything was given to us because Jesus wanted to give it to us. And he gave it all differently, right? To different people. And he said just the implication is go use it. And some of you know the Christian song, right? Freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, others will know that I live. Listen to what St. Paul, he kind of describes us in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says this. The point is, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And here, and this is where the point I really wanted to get to. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. In other words, God gives it to you so you can be abounding in, in good work. He distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. And what he's talking about is he was encouraging the Corinthians Christians to give a special offering to the Christians in Jerusalem who are experiencing severe famine. So that's what he's talking about, is that God is giving to you freely so that you can freely give. In other words, another way to say that is, you are blessed to be a blessing, all right? And the fact is this also, it's not about how much you have, it's what you've been given and what you do with it. Just like when those kids came into my room they were all given a random envelope. It's not what they had. It's not how much they had. It doesn't matter what the other person has. It's what I do with what I have been given freely by grace, by mercy. The talent, that's the talent. Everything from faith to, to life to the gospel to money to whatever God has given me, that's the talent. And what do I do with it? 
as a, as a child of God, as one who has been so freely blessed and so freely given to. The second thing, a faithful servant always knows the investment pays off. Now, the only way you know that is because the Bible tells us that is true. Because when those kids came into my classroom, did they know that their investment was gonna pay off? No, they didn't know that till the end. And in fact, you notice that in the parable, did those servants know that their investment was gonna pay off? No, they didn't say anything about it. He just gave them, and with the implication, do something with it. But the reality is, is the master knew I trust you because I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna bless you and you're gonna put that to use and it's gonna produce. It's gonna produce the fruit of righteousness and you will be a blessing. It will always produce, it will always give. You know, St. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15, which is a great resurrection chapter. He said this right at the end, right after he talks about the resurrection, he says, therefore, Stand firm, let nothing move you. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know your labor in the Lord is never in vain, is never worthless. Now this is an important point to understand because I know from my own experience and maybe you know from your own experience is doesn't it sometimes appear that living for the Lord doesn't pay off very much? For example, I know some people who have raised kids in a Christian home. They, they raise their children to know Jesus and to follow Jesus, only to have those children not follow Jesus anymore. I know kids at school that try to be the nice kid and try to stand up for the other kid that's bullied, and they themselves then get bullied. I know the worker who gives faithfully at work and does their work faithfully and, and you know, goes over and above and everything and is never thanked. And you begin to think, when you think about all these different things, you, you begin to think, is it worth it? Is it all in vain? Well, let me give you an example of someone who a lot of people thought his work was in vain. Remember what happened when Jesus was arrested? He suffered and he was crucified. Everybody thought that was in vain. That was the end of a ministry. Had me no meaning. Well, doesn't God have a surprise in store for that, right? That he brings his son back alive. And it's because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you and I are here. It's because of Jesus' resurrection, death and resurrection, that you and I are forgiven, that we are children of God, that our baptism means something, that when we come to the Lord's table, it does strengthen us in faith. It's because what appeared to be lost actually was the greatest miracle that ever happened. And so the fact is, is continue serving the Lord because the Lord, the labor in the Lord is never in vain. It is always worth something. It's always going to accomplish that which God wants to accomplish. It's interesting. I was thinking about this with that last servant comments we've made there. What was it about the last servant that was really different than the other two? Now, remember when the master, he comes before the master, and remember what he says to him. He says, I knew you were a hard man. You just take what you want. And then the master calls his bluff, and he says what? He said, yeah, you knew I was like that, but you should have been afraid of me then enough that you would have at least put it with the bankers to earn some interest but you didn't even fear me that much. In other words, what he's saying is you're just downright lazy. And in fact, you lived a self-centered, self-glorifying life, and now you're gonna reap your reward for living for you as your God. You will go where you're going to gnash your teeth and everything. See, that's the point of the parable. And that's why, you know, I don't want to brood too much about that because the fact that you guys and I'm here probably means we want to serve Jesus. We're not the worthless servant. We want to use the gifts and talents that God has given us and put them to use in some way and just be encouraged to continue doing it because whatever you do is never in vain. God works out his plan. The last one. 
The faithful servant longs to hear the words of the master. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a little. I set you over much. Enter the joy of your master. When I was a little kid, and perhaps maybe you did this too, how many of you made artwork for your mom? Anybody here make, or grandma or somebody, you made artwork, right? Now, let me tell you, your artwork, my, let's just take my artwork. Was my artwork ever going to make it into the Louvre? No. It was pretty cruddy, all right? But it was pretty cruddy. Even my mom knew that. But when I gave it to my mom, was she happy for it? Because she knew that I gave it because I loved her. I wanted to show her how much I loved her by giving her this masterpiece, though it was not much of anything. And you know what she would do? She would give me this big hug and thank me for it, right? And she said, boy, Dave, well done, well done. And then she'd plaster it up on the refrigerator, right? In the old days, it was with tape. And then magnets came out. Boy, that was something right? And the art would stay there for everybody to see. In fact, people would come in and go, what's that ugly stuff on the refrigerator? <laughs> Your mom knew that it was a gift that was done in love. When we come and we present our lives to the Lord, oh, there's going to be flaws and faults, and there's going to be smudges, and there's, this is not going to be pretty art but to the master who understands it's been done because you're the faithful servant. You love your master and you want to do well. He's going to look at that and he's going to look by past all the faults. And what's he going to say? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Come and enjoy the presence of the master, the joy of the master. I have a thing. When I kick the bucket, eventually, I'm going to tell you right now, I am not really concerned about anybody's platitudes, and I don't really care if you come up with a lot of criticisms. Because it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you think. It's going to be one person that I'm looking forward to hearing from. And I want to be the one who hears the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your master. That's what will matter. That's what will matter. So I pray and hope that God will bless us all in our walk of faith, that we will be a faithful servant, utilizing all the gifts and abilities and talents and whatever else God has given us to serve him in his kingdom and to do it in love and in joy of being a child of God that we may hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your master. We stand for creed and for prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of, and of all, all things, things visible, visible and, and invisible, invisible. And, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten, begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, begotten not made, being, being of one substance with the Father, Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down, down from heaven, heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for entrusting us with all things out of your free gift of grace. Send us the Holy Spirit that we will be joyful, faithful servants of you and of our world. May this also be true for our brothers and sisters at Christ Lutheran Church in Perry, Georgia, Rebuilding the Breach Ministries, Crown Point, Indiana, Walther Lutheran High School, Melrose Park, Illinois, Cross Lutheran School in New Brunfels, Texas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things. Thank you for the businesses of our area that provide employment, goods, and or services. Namely, G Wiz Tech Solutions, Thai House Restaurant, Jensen Beach Ballroom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, your healing comes in many forms. You give what is needed. Give the needed healing to those affected by the COVID virus and those grieving the death of loved ones, especially as we enter this holiday season. Also pray that you bring healing to Dennis and Connie Madler, with Deacon Joe, with Lois Kine, Lana Afong, Mike Forquet, Giancarlo DiCarpini, Melissa Powers, Jan Hansen, Rich Davis, Tom Young, Gene Zarati, John Barnett, Ken Lawson Sr., Ken Lawson Jr., with Eugene, with David and Carolyn Marion, Carolyn Chrissy, Laura Bryan, Keith Ho, Pam McCormick, Terry Cheek, Walena Hughes, and Lydia Glarden as she nears the ends of this earthly life and those now we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this country. We are blessed in so many ways. Help us to understand that we are blessed to be a blessing. Please help with the peaceful transition of power between President-elect Biden and President Trump, other congressional, state, and local offices. We ask for godly success for all our elected representatives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, when you created the world, you established marriage as a foundational part of the community. In this way, you provided a place where children may grow and thrive. Of course, sin drastically changed all this. Now there are many challenges and threats to the stability and love which should be part of marriages and families. Please help homes and relationships to be filled with with faith, hope, love, forgiveness, and healing. Bless Brandon and Sybil Miglino uh, Miglino, on their anniversary, and also bless these homes with your gifts. Dennis and Connie Madler, Willis and Anne Marie Milner, Mimi Montessi, Richard and Susie Murray, Jack and Carolyn Onan, Jeff and Cindy uh, Dezeal, with Michelle Fisher, Ryan and Christina (coughs) Gold, with Sylvia Hickman, with Zachary and Catherine Johnson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Normally at this time of our worship service, we'd pass the offering plates, but we're holding back on that while the COVID is still kind of hanging out there. Um, but we just thank you for your continued generosity for the ministry you have. If you have an offering, um, you want to bring it to church, you can drop it off at the church office. You can mail it in. Uh, we can teach you how to do electronic giving if you want to do it that way. Um, also, we have receptacles at our, our entrance and exits um, where you can do it. We'll, we'll be happy to show you where you can place that. But just thank you for your continued gener- generosity as we continue to reach out into our community to do what is best for the community and sharing the love of Jesus in word and action. I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and stand now. We'll stand now again for the offering prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for all the gifts that you graciously give us. Receive a portion of our gifts, signs of our gracious love, In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, 
on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink. For this is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. you. May be seated. Friends in Christ, it it is with great joy and, and open hearts that we receive this sacrament, this nourishment for our souls. This is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat, take and drink. Take and take drink the body and blood of Jesus. Amen. stand. Trusting in his words, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may these true, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life eternal. You may go in his peace. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, to have this opportunity to worship here together and virtually. Father, Encourage us to use the gifts that you have given us, not to bury them in the ground, but to use them to grow and nourish your kingdom, to share the love of Christ that we have with all that we meet. Strengthen us, preserve us, and lead us where you would have us go. 
in word and in deed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Forgiven and fed you are now entering the mission field. Here I am, Lord. Save me. me. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty, from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. told every lightning bolt where it should go, or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow, who imagined the sun and gives source to its light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of the night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All-powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. that hold me back hold me back from you I'm trying so hard so I can be free so you and I can run this race you mark for me as you are 